One of the first legends in football was Stanley Matthews. Playing as outside right, his career spanned for over 30 years and retired from football at the age of 50. He represented Stoke City, Blackpool and the national team of England, being one of the most amazing players of his generation. Stanley Matthews was born on the 1st of February of 1915 in Stoke. His father was a local boxer and encouraged his four sons in fitness. From a very young age Stanley showed signs of his speed and at the age of six he had won a 100-yard race for the under-15 category. His love however was football and at the age of 14 he represented English schoolboys. Despite being a fan of Port Vale, he joined fierce rival Stoke City in 1930 as a youth player. He excelled with the reserve team and on his 17th birthday he signed a professional contract for £5 per week which was the maximum wage back then. He would make his first team debut in March of the same year and would play one more game during the season. On his second season he played 15 games as Stoke City won the second division returning to the top tier after 10 years. Matthew's first season on the first division was successful. He played 29 games and scored 11 goals as the team finished 12th. In 1934 he made his debut for England on a game against Wales and scored the third goal on a 4-0 victory. During the next years he established himself as one of the best players of Stoke and the Football League in general. Stoke finished 4th in 1936 which still remains the highest finish for the Potters. With Matthews on the team it was ensured that the stands of Victoria Ground were full and also ensured that the team would be competitive. Stoke did not enjoy a good season in 1938 and Matthews was accused for having more attention on the international games of England than these of the local competitions. He handed in a transfer request on February but after a meeting with the fans he decided to stay. He later revealed that he was touched by the strong will of the crowd who wanted him to stay. The Potters eventually finished on the 17th place and avoided relegation. Next season was much improved with Matthews having a very good season as the team finished on the respectable 7th place. In 1939 the Second World War started and all the competitions in England stopped. Matthews was 24 at that time and joined the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom. He was based outside Blackpool and during the war he had played many times for the club of Blackpool. He was still playing whenever it was possible for Stoke, mainly for Warleg and the War Cup. During that time he had also played for Scottish clubs Rangers and Morton, and one game for Arsenal against Dynamo Moscow. When the war finished he returned to Stoke. In 1937 the Potters put a serious challenge for the title. The relations between Matthews and head coach Bob McCree were not very good though. In February after he returned from a knee injury he was not included on the lineup and he handed in a transfer request. This time his request was accepted but they agreed not to make it public until the end of the season. In a matter of hours it was public known however. On the 10th of May he joined Blackpool, missing the last three games of the season. On the last day of the season, Stoke was sitting first and needed an away victory against Sheffield United in order to clinch the title. The Potters however lost 2-1 and the title was won by Liverpool. Stoke eventually finished fourth matching its best ever finish. Matthews arrived in Blackpool at the age of 32. It looked like he was towards the end of his career but would prove everyone wrong. There he would meet Stan Mortensen, Jackie Mudi, Ernie Taylor, and Bill Berry, forming one of the most entertaining front lines of English football. At those years however there were better teams in England. Manchester United, Wolverhampton and Arsenal were the main protagonists, with Portsmouth, Tottenham and Preston North End having great teams as well. On his first season he helped the team to reach the FA Cup final but Blackpool lost 4-2 against Matt Busby's Manchester United. In 1950 he was included as a last-minute call to the English squad for the World Cup. England was knocked out during the group stage as Matthews only played once. In 1951, Blackpool finished third and reached the FA Cup final again but this time lost 2-0 against Newcastle. 
In 1952 with McBray leaving the managerial position at Stoke, new manager Frank Taylor wanted him back. His coach at Blackpool Joe Smith inspired Matthews to stay and mentioned his confidence that he can still win the FA Cup with the club despite being at the age of 37. During the 1952-53 season Matthews had an injury which kept him sidelined for three months. Despite this he returned to the side which managed to reach a third FA Cup final in five seasons. This time the opponent was Bolton Wanderers. Blackpool was considered as the favourite but Bolton scored on the second minute of the game. Stan Mortensen equalised on the 35th minute but Bolton scored again four minutes later. On the second half, the Tangerines conceded a third goal on the 55th minute and their chances for lifting the trophy had been minimised. Matthews was at the age of 38 at that time. On the 68th minute he left the defenders of Bolton behind and crossed. The goalkeeper fumbled and Mortensen scored his second. Matthews had already shifted gear and was unstoppable. Mortensen completed the hat trick on the 89th minute with a direct free kick. With moments left, Matthews dribbled around Bolton's defenders on his right wing. He crossed to Bill Perry who scored the winner. Matthews had finally won the FA Cup. The final was called as the Matthews final which was something he never accepted. He insisted that the whole team should get credit and that it would have been fairer to be called as the Mortensen's final who scored three goals. Mortensen himself keeps the record for being the only player to have scored a hat-trick on a Wembley's FA Cup final. In fact he was just the third player to have scored three goals on a cup final. Even though he was close to 40, Matthews was still one of the best players of Blackpool. In 1954 he was called to the English squad for the World Cup. This time the performance of England was better but crashed 4-2 against Uruguay on the quarter-finals. With Blackpool he kept his fine form and helped the team to finish as runners up to Manchester United in 1956. On that year he won the inaugural Ballon d'Or. He was a regular in most of the games until 1961 when he rejoined Stoke City at the age of 46. He signed for £50 per week which was double the money he was receiving at Blackpool. At the time Stoke was playing on the second division but after two seasons the Potters returned on the top tier of England. On his last two seasons he had injuries which kept him out of the lineup and he decided to retire in 1965 at the age of 50. On his last season he appeared for the reserve team, playing just once for the senior team. On that season he was knighted for his services in football, becoming the only player to receive such an honor while still active. Stoke City decided to arrange a testimonial game which took place in April of 1965. His coaching career started long before his playing career ended. Particularly, since 1953 he was giving up summers to coach poor kids in Africa. In 1978 he had even organized a tour for kids in South Africa to visit Brazil for a football game. Immediately after his playing career ended he was appointed as general manager of Port Vale alongside his good friend and ex-teammate at Blackpool and Stoke, Jackie Mudi. The team however was under a very poor financial situation and his time was not successful. After touring the world coaching in the United States, Australia, Canada and Africa, Matthews and his wife Mila returned in Stoke in 1989. He was made honorary president of Stoke City and later of Blackpool. In February of 2000 Sir Stanley Matthews passed away three weeks after his 85th birthday. It was estimated that more than 100,000 people paid tribute as his funeral procession passed through the city of Stoke. Sir Stanley Matthews was one of the best players ever to step foot on the football pitch. He is one of the very few footballers who never got booked and a real gentleman of the game. He finished his career winning just one FA Cup, two second division championships and nine British championships with England. It's ensured that if he was playing nowadays he would have made a great career to one of the biggest clubs of England or even abroad. We hope you enjoyed the video. Comment below on whom you would like to make a video on the next episode. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our work. Thanks for watching.